Hey Hickok 45, here I am again sitting in the woods. It was kind of planning maybe to do a little vlog uh, today. It was funny this morning someone left a comment, time for a vlog. Well, funny you should ask. I think I said <laughs> might do one today because I probably have a lot of uh, non-essential, unimportant things to share with you, right? That's kind of what a vlog is. Right? Couldn't be anything too critical. I mean, really, what could I have that would be extremely critical for you to hear? You don't even know me. Well, maybe you do. No, anyway, just wanted to uh, touch base with you and make sure you're still there, you're behaving, watching all the videos, enjoying them, okay, or most of them, enjoying most of them, watching all of them, right? First and foremost, I want to let you know, because I have not mentioned it uh, yet in a vlog, I guess, is that we will be doing our last meet and greet for the season at uh, Bud's Gun and Knife. No, it's Bud's Gun. Bud's Gun Shop in Range. Okay, I'll get it right in a minute. Bud's Gun Shop in Range. It's a new shop in Sevierville, Tennessee. Okay, over in East Tennessee. I mentioned it, you know, way back in the spring. Even we knew we were going to do one, just didn't know when. But anyway, we will be there. I will be there on uh, September the 20th from noon to 3. So make sure you're there. I did a Facebook posting about it. I'll do another one. Reminder, a couple weeks probably. And uh, so we'll see you there. I don't care where you live. You better be there. I don't want any lame excuses like, well, I like to be there, Hickok, but I live in England. <laughs> so what? What's a little water? You can go right across, man. Well, I'm in California. So what? It's a big event. You should be there. The mountains will be beautiful in September. They're always beautiful. The Smokies, Sevierville. Dolly Parton lives there. Yeah, that'll get you there. I'm hoping she'll show up. Yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, uh, September 20th, uh, noon to 3. Be there. Or be square. Okay. I have not been to that place yet, the new shop, but it's supposed to be pretty nice, uh, nice range and, and everything. So appreciate you showing up and uh, just say hi, uh, you know, whatever. I know I'm not that big a treat to meet, but uh, anyway, you know, come on out. What else? Oh, yeah, well, another thing I want to mention early on, I've been getting a lot of uh, you know, messages about this this this. Thing that's so trendy right now and maybe it's helpful too but the ALS uh, ice bucket thing I think there are people who have done videos and challenging me and I keep getting them just like rapid fire uh, uh, please don't be offended because I, I haven't even seen the videos and I probably won't uh, busy 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 for one thing and uh, I have my own charities and, and yeah I just I just Call it a uh, character flaw on my part, but I really uh, am really hard. I'm really difficult to get sucked into anything that I haven't come up with myself. I, I just call me hard-headed. I'm sorry. Uh, and so anyway, I give to charities and uh, every month, and uh, we do things here on the compound. You know, uh, selling targets and things for for those purposes. Have been doing that since we started, but. Don't get into the things, the big movements uh, and those sorts of things, the, 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 the breast cancer, which of course is a great cause. Uh, you won't see me wearing a pink ribbon probably. It's not that I don't support it, may even give to it, uh, but I will definitely not, definitely not be wearing a pink ribbon or, or dumping water on my head or at least for that, mainly because I'm hard-headed. I just don't uh, respond to those kinds of things. I'm, I'm sorry, okay? Uh, might have a couple of positive uh, character traits but I also have my flaws and that's one of them I, and I think a lot of shooters are like that we're in a way we're by nature we're independent sorts you know I'm a really laid-back sort of person most of the time uh, but I am also very independent and I, I tend to my antenna go up when there's anything that's coming through that's extremely trendy looking fashion uh, related and all that kind of thing I, I, I'm sorry you know I might go write a check for $500 to whatever that cause is I hear about, but I, I am not going to participate probably, you know, in in the game, so to speak. So sorry about that. Uh, please forgive me if you've done something regarding that or you don't understand it. I probably don't understand you either. But anyway, uh, I'm sure it's a worthy cause. I hope at least a good percentage of it is going to the actual cause. I know in a lot of these major campaigns like that, once you see how much of the actual 
dollar is going to the getting to the people that need it, it makes you want to cry. But you know, hopefully they're doing better than that. But anyway, good luck to you folks doing that kind of thing. But we just, uh, you know, we're just not not coerced into anything, unfortunately. Uh, I guess, <laughs> fortunately, unfortunately, however you look at it. John and I are really proactive with what we do. I, I'm really proactive. Uh, we have people always uh, tagging us for this and that kind of thing, or wanting us to do a video with them, with this, do that and that. And we just inundated with it, really. And uh, you know, whether it's a good cause, whether it's something silly, whether it's something uh, serious, or whatever it is, we, we just, you know, it, it has to be uh, pretty much initiated by us to do it. And the other thing, I, I think with, with uh, charitable uh, things, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to tell someone else what to do with their, their money. I don't like to be told what to do with mine. I like to do it voluntarily, of course. And I remember in the companies I worked for, in fact, I have a little history on this, come think of it. Uh, people that I worked with can tell you in the re human resources department, both in the corporate world and in the education world, that uh, we were always uh, encouraged to donate to a United Way. Again, I had my own charities. And whenever I would get the pressure because it made the company look better, the department look better, or the school look better, whatever it was, because United Way would hit you wherever you work. Uh, I always had a, a pat answer. I even wrote it up whenever I'd get the literature uh, to return and how much are you giving, and if not, why not, or whatever it is, you know. I just had a pat. In fact, I kept it on word processor going way back when I had the first word processor. <laughs> Thank you, but I uh, do not... Uh, make what was I, I wrote I do not make my charitable charitable contributions through my uh, employer thank you for asking or something like that and I would just print that out and send that every time I'd get one of those so, so I'm again I'm hard-headed you know I do things on my own they have to be uh, initiated by me sorry anyway I spent too much time on that okay but anyway you know it's one reason we do the vlogs it's so that you sort of get an idea of my thinking on things uh, what a weirdo I really am you know, probably shouldn't do these because I uh, should just let you uh, watch the videos of shooting and so you don't really know me. But anyway, I think most of you can sort of understand that. Uh, 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 you know, we gun folks, again, we're an independent lot in some ways. But uh, anyway, what was else was I going to talk Oh, I know what I was going to talk about. Speaking of AKs and firearms that I'm holding, this is the Sentry Arms, you might have noticed. And you, uh, you probably saw, if not, check out the, the video of John shooting it, where he broke it. He broke it, banging on the cover. <laughs> well, I don't know whether he broke it that way or not, but the, uh, the mainspring uh, broke. Not the brick, but the little uh, detente there. It's actually called a retainer, I think, spring retainer. It, uh, the edge of it broke off a little bit, either from John's banging on it or just uh, naturally. But uh, Sentry Arms took care of it. This just happened, what, three, four days ago. And uh, I contacted them. They sent another one, and it's back in operation. I guess we haven't fired it yet. They fired a couple shots here, so it's ready to go. I guess that's all you can ask for a company. If uh, you have a problem with a firearm, and you're going to have a problem, uh, eventually, probably, and sometimes sooner than later, right? Maybe when you first get it. Uh, if they make it good, if they fix it, I've had that happen a few times with me. Uh, there you go. Uh, anything can break, but uh, we appreciate Century Arms, you know, taking care of that. And we'll see if John can break this one. Actually, John's trying to break all of my guns. He thinks I shoot too much, and so he's just in the process of trying to break all of them, I think. But uh, uh, anyway, I won't say any more. I think maybe they're upgrading that particular part. Uh, I've got a hint of that, you know, and that's sometimes how a manufacturer finds out, you know, if a part's breaking. They, uh, they start working on that and uh, upgrade that part. And it happens, as we know, with blocks and everything else, doesn't it? What else about firearms? So speaking of that, you notice the, the bodyguard video we did, Chapter 2, M&P 380 bodyguard, whatever we called it, Chapter 2, had some problems, especially with the, uh, the aftermarket trigger, the Galloway trigger system in that one. And, uh, yeah, we're not in the business of bashing gun companies or anybody else really uh, you know they they put that in the gun and it was working pretty well we'd get a light strike now and then it seemed like in the video it was even worse so I don't know we just we let it stand and uh, uh, I have contacted them they've contacted me 
I'm going to send it back to them and they're going to put the heavier spring in it. And as I understand from some of your comments that it just needs the heavier spring. Okay. Uh, why would you even have a spring that light that it won't fire, you know, so often? <laughs> but and, and then also uh, some people had asked about the ammo. Maybe it was the ammo. Well, as I responded uh, here and there to people, it's always been my impression that Federal primers were lighter than Winchester, okay? And I know from my early days of competition and people reloading, if anybody ever had a problem with a primer, if it's like whatever, they jumped on it or hit it with a hammer, it was more likely to go off if it was a, a Federal. And a lot of people s swear by the Federal primers for that reason. They want lighter primers, you know? instead of the Winchester, which are generally a little harder. Unless all that's changed, I don't think it has. I don't know. They all work. Uh, so, so that wasn't really on my mind or my radar that it would have been the, the federal American Eagle ammo because we rarely have any issues with American Eagle. It's always been good ammo the uh, last 20, 30 years, however long I've been using it, however long it's been around. Uh, it's one of those that I've always gone to if I were having trouble with ammo. Well, let me get the American Eagle and, and see how it does with that, you know, because it generally works with that. And again, not, not to just promote federal anymore because they're helping us, but that's just always been my impression of American Eagle, good stuff, you know. So I didn't think about that too much. Anyway, uh, yesterday or day before, I thought, well, let me try some other ammo with this thing, uh, too, and I can update you all, whether we do it in a video or whatever. Or on Facebook or something, but I uh, I got some Winchester white box I had out. I got some Blazer out, and couldn't put my hands on anything else right away. But I uh, went out and fired some of that through the uh, the same firearm with the Galloway trigger, and got even more uh, misfires. With the Blazer, it would it would it took two strikes on every round for for it to fire. It was very consistent. First shot or first pull click, second one bang, <laughs> then click bang, click bang, and, you know through a whole magazine or two. And with the Winchester white box, uh, I think it was one light strike in the first magazine and two or three in the second magazine. So basically the same or, or worse, right? But anyway, they're gonna, they're gonna put the uh, heavier spring in it and we'll update you on that and see how it goes. Because like I said in the video, it's the best feeling trigger. If that thing were 100% reliable, it would be uh, a highly recommended uh, firearm for me, uh, to you, I really would. I don't know. If I would like it more than some of the firearms I carry, because I do like the Glock 42 if I'm carrying a, a 380, and as you know from recent videos, I really like the uh, LC9S a lot. I like the Shield a lot. That's a great gun, you know. So, so I'm not driven to carry the the M&P Bodyguard. So I don't want to uh, unnecessarily bash it. I think the one that did not have the trigger replacement was doing okay. There were some slide failures in terms of not locking back. Maybe a light strike here and there, but it was mainly the slide not locking back, I think, on some of the magazines. I don't know. I have to go back and look at my videos. It's mainly with that Galloway trigger. And, uh, and again, a lot of people swear by that. I think I mentioned in the video, a lot of people love it and have not had trouble. And then uh, you'll see people who have probably has to do with the trigger spring. It probably just needs that heavy trigger spring. So we'll, we'll find out and I'll, I'll update you. We may do a, uh, a chapter two on, on the, the Galloway trigger system, okay, when we get the gun back. So, so I'm gonna send that off and, and do that, all right? We wanna be fair to people and uh, you know, tell it like it is. And uh, but the way we do our videos, it's hard to hide, you know? Not that we would try to. It's unedited, just like right now. If I say something stupid, or I get stung by a wasp on the side of my face right now, you're just going to see me cry and boo-hoo. Can't hide it, right? <laughs> so anyway, what else? Here comes a cool muffler. You, you uh, might have seen my posting. I won't talk too long about that. You might have seen my posting about the uh, on Facebook about the giver. Actually, there was a lot of reaction to that. I was surprised. I, I thought, should I post this or not? You know, it's just that. I, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, posting, I taught The Giver, the novel, for several years. It's one of my favorites, really. Even though it's targeted to young people, I'm kind of a young people, right? Mentally. No, it's, it's really a well-written uh, book. It's a clever story. Uh, anybody of any age, I think, would enjoy it, all right? So uh, that said, I'm not really talking about 
children's books necessarily. Uh, grab a copy sometime and read it. It'll take you about an hour and a half. You know, it's a it's an interesting story. Now, the reason one reason I like it, well, a couple, well, maybe three. Uh, one reason the kids loved it. Okay, the middle schoolers loved it. High schoolers love it. Uh, they love the book, and you always love it when students, young people, love something they're reading. You know? So, uh, and it's something required. So that's always great. Well, you know, it deals with utopian societies and that kind of thing. And that's always an interesting topic because I think we gun owners, we shooters, we independent sorts, as you know from my uh, ice bucket discussion, we are really reluctant to all these uh, notions of perfection, perfecting society. You know, in a lot of ways, we see that as one of the ills of the world is everybody, not everybody, but uh, certain segments, certain factions in society trying to make the perfect world. And the movie didn't really deal with that as much. The movie was okay, so different. You know, it's kind of boring even to even talk about how, well, the movie wasn't as good as the book. Well, it never is. And of course, stuff is left out. They change things like they always do. Um, but the thing that I, I regretted from the movie, if you've seen it, and it is, it'll probably do really well with Jeff Bridges and Earl Streep and all that. You know, if you have kids or if you just go see it yourself, it will be a widely seen movie, I'm pretty sure, just as the book is, in, is widely read, one of the most widely read books in the last 20 years probably. So it's a huge piece of our culture is what I was uh, talking about. In fact, I taught it and I liked it. But one of the things they, I thought they didn't deal with, I was hoping they would, and I was wondering if Hollywood would dwell on this too much. Uh, it was hard to imagine. But one of the things in the novel I always thought was interesting and, uh, and was interesting for the students to read and think about was, you know, one of the things they realize in this society is, is they have done away with anything that's dangerous. And they realize, and they don't know it early on, but they're not allowed to have candles in their homes. They're not allowed to have a fireplace. There's no fire or anything. You learn all this just through the process as the author reveals it to you. And so it's always made, always made for interesting discussion. So this society was made totally safe. You know, there's hardly really no death as they knew it. You couldn't get hurt. And so that was made for some interesting discussions, you know, as compared with our society and how society is messy. It's not perfect. People do get hurt. And what's it worth to make a perfect society? You know, just like in this novel, when you see, and maybe a lot of you have already seen the movie if you haven't read the book, what have they given up to make a society like this? And I think it, it points right to a lot of our concerns in the gun rights movement. It's just, it's just right up our alley. And I loved it. I, was, I tried not to be evangelical as a teacher uh, in hardly any way, you know. You know, kind of lead people to see things on their own. If they want to see it, they will. Uh, what did Confucius say, my old buddy? I remember we were walking along one day uh, on one of the trails out and he said, uh, what was it he said? When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I had that posted in my classroom for decades. Uh, you can't make somebody see something. They'll see it when they're ready, you know? And they may never see it. But, you know, you can relate that so easily to, uh, to so many things. Uh, you know, how could we save lives? Well, we could reduce the speed limit for cars to 20 miles per hour. How many people are killed a year? 50,000? A lot of them are you know, involved drinking, but there's about 50,000, at least it used to be, in this country killed every year on the roads. Well, I would uh, mention the students, how many people you think we could save if we reduce the speed limit, literally, you know, to 20 miles per hour, 25? At least half of them, probably 40,000 of them. Why don't we do it? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it just makes for interesting conversation, I think. But anyway, uh, that, uh, a lot of that novel was really about removing anything that was dangerous. And I kind of suspected that wouldn't be dwelt upon by the lefties in Hollywood. But still, a lot of the, a lot of the message in that is, is, is pretty good. I mean, it's there. And I, I think it's, it's worthy. It's, uh, even the movie version has changed some of it dramatically turned into kind of a love story, but uh, a lot of things for kids to think about that may never read the book. Maybe for you to think about. Maybe you're a kid, okay? Maybe you're not. <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd mention that. 
What else? Speaking of kids, well, John's not a kid anymore, is he? Doesn't seem like that long ago. I'll embarrass him. We were walking right down these trails, and I was having to hold his hand. He was so little. Yeah, yeah, ask him about that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, don't, uh, don't forget that we've got the other channel going there, Hickok 45 and Sun. John will do most of the stuff over there probably, but I'll be over there doing some stupid stuff. And uh, like I've said already, uh, something besides shooting maybe. Maybe I'll review books. Maybe I'll review flowers or something, you know, but uh, uh, that way you can't complain about what I'm doing on a shooting channel talking about daisies and how they taste or something stupid like that. So, but anyway, uh, and that's one thing in the vlogs are for in the radio shows. I can sit here and talk about anything I like. And, of course, you don't have to listen, right? <laughs> but uh, what else was I going to talk about? Oh, I know, well... I know I was going to talk about gun rights again, because, you know, things tend to be going pretty well for us in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, they're not. There's always something crazy proposed. You see it in the news. Hopefully, you're following that. Uh, mainly, again, a reminder not to not to relax too much. Uh, can't relax here. The mosquitoes are biting me, but don't relax too much now, because just because we overcame that huge hurdle, you know, last year, they're always out there and they're coming at us from different directions. They're dividing us and they're coming at us from uh, you know, state to state. They're going after hunters. They're going after knives, pocket knives. They're going after anything they possibly can to try to create that perfect utopian society, right? Uh, in their dreams. But, uh, you know, it is. <laughs> I mean, they, are, they will try anything. You've got to stay in touch with your representatives. Know their names, write them off and give them a call. Stay in touch. Let them know what you're thinking. Your local uh, politicians especially. Uh, the sheriff of your county. Uh, does he allow you to uh, uh, register NFA items in where you live? If you're in a state where there's no law against uh, owning a suppressor, for example, or a select fire, you know, firearm, uh, you know, your, fire, your lo local sheriff still has to sign off on it. You know, find out where he stands on that if you don't know. You may not want one now, but you don't know in three years. You know, suppressors, for example, they're becoming so much more popular. You know, everybody's buying those things, you know, and they are fun. Uh, but check with your sheriff, sheriff sometime. Find out whether he approves those, because some don't. Some just willy-nilly do not approve uh, select fire, firearms or suppressors. You know, and then you have to set up a trust and go around them. So they can't keep you from getting them. You just have, it just requires a little more money and a little more paperwork. But you can generally go around that. But check with them. And if there's elections coming up, uh, let them know. They're not going to get your vote. You know? We don't need to be giving anybody our votes or anybody our money who is not supporting the freedoms that, that we hold dear. You know, the Constitution. The Bill of Rights, and again I say Bill of Rights, not just the Second Amendment, you know. Uh, there's too many people that are for the Second Amendment, but they're a uh, little, little sketchy on some of the other freedoms, right? So we've got to watch for that. But, yeah, gun-free zones, if there's a gun-free zone where you live, uh, now sometimes there's these federal gun-free zones. There's not a lot we can do about that right now. If you're going to a federal courthouse or places like that or a school yeah okay that's not likely to change anytime soon probably but uh, any place else that just decides they don't want firearms in there you know what they're saying is they don't want firearms in there being carried by legally uh, by, by legal persons or people carrying them legally they don't want uh, good people carrying guns that's really what they're saying I mean are they gonna stop the bad guys of course not that makes it even more inviting if you know there's nobody in some place that has a firearm, thank you, sunshine, then, uh, hey, target-rich environment for a wacko, right? So, anyway, we need to let those people know about that. If there's a restaurant or anything like that, not going, of course, is the first thing. Don't spend your money there. But almost more importantly is to notify them, let them know. You know, send them an email, uh, tell them why you're leaving, you open the door and you're leaving or whatever because you're not protected there. Uh, you know, where's their armed guard? Where's their Navy SEALs in there to protect you? You know, I mean, you're not gonna feel comfortable going in there with your family with no protection. You know, just let them know 
and that's that's very important. It's probably more important than just walking away. But we definitely want to walk away, not spend our money there, right? Makes sense to me. So, anyway, what else about the firearms world? Got to stay after the gun rights. Um, have you been in a lot of gun shops lately? Gun shows? You know, uh, gun sales are in the doldrums, of course, in the summer. And after this period of, uh, of uh, <laughs> I, I call it saturation, over the last couple of years, or three or four or five years, people have been buying guns so fast and in such numbers that now we've kind of slowed down a little bit. Uh, we bit back on the gun rights issues. They know they can't just willy-nilly outlaw all the stuff that, uh, that we want to own. And so many of you, including myself, we have purchased the things that we want. The black rifles, the ARs, the AKs, and everything. Things that were looking like they could be in jeopardy have flown off the shelves. Well, if you go into a gun shop today, gun show, you see lots of them. And they're, they're moving kind of slowly because the market has been saturated. I, in some ways, I feel, I feel a little bit for the local gun shops because they're, they're not having those sales they were used to. But you know what? On the bright side, it offers an opportunity for maybe you're not having to scurry around trying to get that AK maybe or that AR you meant to buy five years ago and uh, you, you scrounged enough money together to get one because it was looking uh, desperate. Well, now that you've got that, probably some ammo stocked up. I mean, you should. You should have an AR-15 or an AK and about a thousand rounds of ammo. After all, that's the teeth of the Second Amendment. Okay? Be about doing that. Uh, maybe it's a good time to explore some other firearms. You know, look at the revolvers. You might be one of those sorry rascals who does not own a revolver. We won't talk about you if you get at getting one, okay? Be looking at them. Enjoy it. They're fun. Maybe a black powder uh, rifle, pistol, you know, percussion, something kind of historical. If you're relatively new to the firearms hobby, and many, many of you are, hear from you all the time, you've got you a good shotgun, you've got a, a handgun you're really happy with, maybe even a rifle, uh, you've got your, your AR or AK, hey, study some history, uh, look at some videos, there's some really cool stuff out there, there's percussion handguns, the muzzle loaders, the you know, Civil War rifles, the replicas, just, just whatever, uh, what else, get you a Derringer, get you a 22 rifle maybe you don't have, I don't know, you might even find some 22 ammo, right, to go to the bank first, but anyway, uh, be working on those gun rights, don't get too relaxed, we, uh, we can't afford to do that. Uh, I guess I probably rambled enough. I get I get into my radio show mode if I'm not careful. Probably shouldn't have the chair out here and get so comfortable, should I? But anyway, we appreciate you folks watching, and uh, you know it's I can't go anywhere hardly with, without. Well, I can, but as far as anything gun related, uh, I run into you folks. It's good to see you. Uh, I hear story into a guy yesterday in a gun shop in Franklin from Canada. He just moved down here, and he was. A, recognized me and he was enjoying the, the firearms freedom down here and he was in there looking at firearms and you know it's just it's just neat running into you guys uh, and we appreciate you all watching and uh, for some reason thinking we have a little credibility don't know where that comes from but we're glad you think that we're glad we have fooled you this long right no and we we're not perfect obviously uh, we just try to do things the right way uh, you may not agree with me on the, uh, like the charity issues and all of that. Hey, I don't agree with you probably on some things, but uh, we can all compromise, try to understand each other. You know, that's the problem, isn't it, with the anti-gun people. Why would they have such a problem with so many millions of people in this country now that have carry permits, the over 100 million people that have firearms that don't ever do anything illegally? Why do they have such a problem with us? You know, where's the live and let live? You mind your own business, I'll mind mine. Where, where did that go in this country? I, I don't understand it. Now I understand if somebody's shooting up the neighborhood, somebody is a, a criminal, has criminal intent, we all want to get after them, put them away. You know, if they're abusing a firearm, they're trying to hurt you or me or our kids or somebody, we're all after them. 
but what's this business about you know what I own uh, legally and I, I use legally why, why would that bother people that that's just bizarre isn't it so uh, anyway got on my soapbox a little bit sorry about that no I'm not <laughs> good to talk to you again you've been kind of quiet I think it's the uh, the calming effects of the the trees and maybe the mosquitoes and you just don't have much to say that's all right I'll do the talking for both of us but anyway we uh, we can't really express how much we appreciate you all watching and uh, and keeping up with what we're doing we're going to continue to try to, to bring you some interesting stuff, some old stuff. Uh, yeah, as I've said before, it's very kind of random. We've had a lot of newer stuff lately. Got some new stuff we haven't posted yet. But I'm, uh, I, I've got two or three old guns. I am desperately trying to get geared up and do a video on. I'm, I'm looking forward to that as much as anything. There's just a lot of interesting new stuff that we're working with right now. But it's all going to come dribbling out so stay tuned got some speaking of percussion revolvers got some of that coming soon so anyway good to talk to you uh enjoy your popcorn life is good <laughs>